What's going on guys? John Elder here from Codemy.com and in this video, we're going to look at using tabs with PyQt5 and Python. Alright guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to look at tabs with PyQt5 and the PyQt5 designer. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. It's all my courses, videos, and books. For one time fee, just $49, which is insanely cheap. All right, in this video, we're going to look at using tabs. And I love tabs. Like 20 years ago, I built some software that was used by like millions of people, and it was all using tabs. And ever since then, I've just kind of liked using tabs. That's a nice way to lay out any kind of software. So you see, I've got two tabs here. Not a big deal. We've got a picture in one and some random text in the other one. And that's what we're going to look at in this video. So I'm going to go ahead and close this and discard this. And let's start from scratch. I'm in my git bash terminal. I'm in my C slash PyQt5 directory. I've got my virtual environment turned on. So to get to the designer, as you know, we just type in the designer and it should pop up. And we want to create a main window. So let's go ahead and create that. And let me kind of resize this. So it kind of fits in the screen a little better. Okay, so to use tabs, super easy. We just come down here and look for the tab widget. So in containers, we see tab widget. We can just pull it over, pop it in, and we're good to go. So we can resize this to sort of any size we want. Really doesn't matter. And that's cool. Now to add things to each tab, you just click on the one you want to work with. So for instance, in tab one, if we want to put that image that I had earlier, you just come down here and find a label, drag it up there, and just kind of put it wherever we think we want it. I'll just kind of resize this. And when we click on this, we can come over here to our to our editor over here. And let's just come through here and come down here to the Q label, that label we just dropped. And we can go Pix Map and click on that. I think we've looked at doing images before. So we just click Choose File. This thing pops up and then just find the file that you want. I've got a bunch of images in my C GUI directory that we use for our Kinter videos. So I go to images, grab the picture of me and Aspen, which is one of my favorite pictures and completely ridiculous. And we can sort of resize this however we want. That looks good. And we might want to resize the tab thing to kind of fit that. Whatever, we're just kind of playing around. And that's really all there is to it. Really simple. So then we can click on tab two and you notice it's completely empty because it's a different tab, obviously. And so, you know, if we want to come down here and just grab a label, we could slap that in there. Yeah, and resize it if we want. We can come back over here and resize this. And again, I'm just kind of playing around here. This is text tab two. Alright, <laughs> whatever. And that's all there is to it. And just that easy. So if we come up here, and we look in here, there's all kinds of different things we can play around with. So for instance, we can change the tab position. So it's at north, which is the top. So we can come down here and move it to south and boom, the tabs now move down here. Very cool. We can move them to west. Now they're on the left side. We can move them to east. Now they're on the right side. I prefer north. So I'll keep that north. We can play around with the shape of them. There's only a couple of options here. So rounded is the default. We can also do triangle, which makes it these kind of old schooly. Oh, that's kind of cool. I don't know. I'm going to go ahead and keep it rounded. We can do document mode. So watch very carefully here when I click this. Boom, it, it kind of takes away the border a little bit. It makes it just a straight line here. And the border along the bottom and the sides is completely gone. So let me undo it here. Boom, you can see now it has an outline all the way around undo it, it does it like this. So if we run this to get a better look at this, we can go preview, you can see, it's just one line along the top. That's called document view. I'm not really sure what that is for. But if that's the way you like the look of it. You know, if we run it like this, you can see there's a box all the way around. I don't know, whichever you prefer. That's an option for you. You can have tabs closable. So check this out. There's little boxes on them now or little X's on them now. So we can go to preview here. And these don't actually work by default, you would have to write some code behind the scenes. And I'm not going to do that in this video. But just to destroy the tab should be fairly easy to do in the code. So that's kind of cool. So we can get rid of those. 
movable is a real fun one. Check this out. Now we can run this or preview it, I should say. And now I can grab this click and drag and they drag and they move around. Like how cool is that? Like that's a lot of code you would have to write to do that. But no, just click that little button. And now they're completely movable. Very cool. And a lot of fun. And you have this tab bar auto hide. We don't have a tab bar. So nothing there to do. So if we want to add more tabs, we can come up here to our object explorer, whatever this thing's called, and just sort of come through here. And here's our tab widget, right? And here's tab and tab tab one and tab two. Tab one is just labeled tab. Tab two is tab two. But if we click on tab widget and then right click, we can insert page. And we could do after current page or before current page. So let's go after and then boom, now we get a third one. And we can change the titles of each one. So this is tab one, right? So let's come down here to current tab text. And I could say Aspen and me for tab two, again, current text, and we could just go some text. Right? And then for page three, we could just go and change this to tab three and notice it's called page, but you know, it's just a tab. And now if we run this again, preview it, Aspen and me some text tab three is completely empty. Very cool. That's really kind of all there is to tabs. It makes it so easy. It's almost ridiculous to make a video about it. But I like tabs so much. I thought, hey, let's do a video on tabs real quick. Plus, we haven't done a PyQT video in a while. And I kind of want to ease back into it with something easy. <laughs> so <laughs> tabs it is. Now, don't knock the tabs. I love tabs. You can use them for all kinds of different things. Really easy way to make a layout for your software and really simple to use. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off memberships. It pays just $49 to access all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.